Hello everyone and welcome back to the boxing. We've unlocked the secret cup which requires a lot of grinding. But the secret cup, well... It was just more of that. So that's not what this video is about. There are two secrets to the boxing. And that was the rather underwhelming one. So let's move on. The game has a sequel, and the sequel completely kicks ass. So the first thing you should notice about this menu is that there's a story mode, and you better believe we're going to play story mode. Let's go with Red. We're a little familiar with Red. So let, let's see what he's been up to. So the story has branching paths. Welcome to the kickboxing's combat system, and there have been quite a few changes. For one thing, there are kicks now. And characters have grabs, and not one, but two special attacks. You keep all the moves that you could have performed in the boxing, and they've been greatly expanded on in this game. Kicks hit from further away than punches, but the computer seems to have a rather easy time countering them, so you need to use them carefully. So we've only been gone a year, according to the story, but Puma seems a little different. If this is Puma. His shorts said Jackal in the first game, so this might be him. He certainly seems... different, though. So after you defeat a character, you switch to that character and continue playing with them. Aztec is looking a little more festive in this game. Playing as Jackal or Puma, whichever you prefer, is pretty much the same, except now he has that downward punch, which is really good for getting a quick hit in. The machine gun punch is also far less overpowered now, though it's still pretty useful. Aztec is still pretty slow, but he's not as painfully slow as he was in the first game, either. 
They put a lot more effort into balancing the characters in this one. Azteca kind of rocks in this one. He still hits hard, but he's not nearly as slow. So that child we saw when we were choosing our story mode character, Sang, he's the one that Red was talking about hanging out in this gym. And Azteca seems to think Sang is some sort of messiah. We don't know very much about Sang, but he just kind of looked like a normal kid. That seems like it really didn't need to become a fist fight, but this is an anime, more or less, so it was inevitable. Tanaka, just like in the first game, is pretty sturdy. He's a lot more versatile, though. That was his second special attack you just saw. It takes a while to use, and it's not too useful, but it does do a number on the enemy's stamina. For some reason, this fight in particular seems to have slowdown. I don't know why it's only this one. You might notice there's a lot more back and forth going on in these matches, and that's because the characters are a lot more balanced. There's no real exploit to get around the AI in this one.
So Patty claims that she's Prince's fiancé's servant, but what she said earlier, it seemed like she was Prince's fiancé. Maybe she's just disguising herself as his servant. As her servant, rather. Look, it's kind of complex, but the idea is that I'm pretty sure she's disguising herself so that way Prince doesn't know that she's his fiancé. What we were doing wrong... What we were doing wrong just now is we weren't using her special attacks. Her special attacks are incredibly acrobatic and fast. Yeah, like that. She said she knew the sport of the royal family, so that kind of just uh, places more evidence in the she's totally his fiancé corner. But yeah, Patty's pretty fast. So Gio and Prince are friends. Seems like they've been friends for a long time. Prince is a lot less underwhelming in this one. He has an additional special attack that's much faster. And again, thanks to the characters in general being more balanced, it's it just comes out much better. You know, he's actually you can actually fight with him. He's not a joke in this one, is what I'm trying to say. You might notice that we're stuck in the corner, but we're not even having any trouble. Geo just seemed to be kind of happy to play along with the whole let's get a championship belt thing. Seems like a simple guy. So in case you're wondering why Geo had shackles on, it's because he was created in a laboratory by the secret boxing organization, led by Crown. That is a real sentence I just said. Geo isn't nearly as useless in this one. He still hits hard like in the first game, but he's not as slow. He's still pretty slow, though. 
So it looks like Mr. Crown has seen better days. Maybe all those years in the secret boxing organization took its toll. I mean, he's got a cybernetic leg. And based on his dialogue before the fight with Geo, it seemed like he was dying. Very soon, in fact. He's still pretty freaking hard to beat, though. Just like in the other game, he has the best all-around stats, but he's not nearly as overpowered for reasons we'll see when we get to play as him. Man, he's just completely wrecking us. There we go. You can't be prepared for what's happening next. Listen, BT, he just doesn't want- he just doesn't want you to watch him die, okay? And he doesn't want to say that. So yeah, how about a sucker punch? This game's story is both absurd, hilarious, and amazing all at the same time. You might be wondering why we're not using, uh, Crown's special attack from the first game. And that's because a few thi- oh goodness. And that's because a few things have changed since then. It's not nearly as fast, and the last punch he throws is super slow, leaving you wide open. It both works to balance the game and cement how depressing Mr. Crown's story is. They go out of their way to show you that Crown is on his last legs, uh, leg. And perhaps the most depressing touch... Mr. Crown tries to fly, but can't anymore. So we ran out of credits or stamina, whatever you want to say for the story mode. Uh, this game completely kicks ass, and if you want to buy either this or the boxing, they're both available on the PlayStation Store. Thank you all for watching.